In this video, I cover the first of four indoor cycling trainers put through the Llama Lab last week. Now for each indoor trainer, this process involves the unboxing, the building, the configuration, the updating and test riding these trainers using my own Llama Lab test protocol that puts the trainer or power meter through its paces under a number of typical use case scenarios. Those being sim mode, erg mode, steady state riding, over and unders, sprints and ramp tests. All of these tests are typically done with two other trusted sources of power on the bike to see how accurate the trainer is and how it responds to all of those scenarios. The first cab off the rank is from Think Rider. Think Rider are a Chinese company who produce indoor cycling trainers and accessories. They do have a global distribution. You may or may not have heard of them, but today, obviously, we're gonna go through one of their products that isn't quite their flagship product. It's the X5 Neo, which is one or two down the list, depending on how you classify their offerings. Okay, let's get straight to the technical details or technical specifications of this smart trainer before we jump on the bike and have a look. It is a direct drive interactive smart trainer. Compatibility is quick release 130 and 135. Those adapters are supplied. Also has support for native through axle, although those adapters may or may not be included, depending on where you purchase the unit from. The free hub, as we've come to expect, Shimano or SRAM Hyperglide compatible. No cassette is supplied with that. Other free hub options are available. It does have a pivoting rear axle, meaning it is compatible with things like the Elite Riser and the Wahoo Kicker Climb. The wireless protocols are Ant Plus Power and Speed and also Ant Plus FEC, but you get no cadence with any of those. There's no cadence measurement with this trainer. It's also Bluetooth Smart compatible, but it is not FTMS at this point in time. Power between zero and 2000 watts, power accuracy claimed plus or minus 2%, Calibration, spin down via their app. However, it doesn't appear to have a little icon for calibration in Zwift. Max gradient, 15%. Flywheel size is 5.1 kilos. I've seen it listed as six kilos elsewhere. That's really neither here nor there because the ride feel of a trainer depends on the gearing and the belt and the, uh, the big drive wheel size as well. And obviously the gear that you select on your bike. However, it does have quite a beefy flywheel. Noise level is quiet, which is what we've come to expect from direct drive trainers these days. The power source is mains power. It's firmware upgrade. And I also stated it has an eight degree tilt both ways. I didn't quite feel that, but it is on the spec sheet, so I will include it there. Now, price wise, it's kind of interesting. Coming out of China, these trainers don't really have a set price that that's the price. It really depends on what the local distributor wants to charge and I guess the volumes that they buy in. The prices that I have seen for this trainer has been US $500, Euro between $460 and $599. 387 pounds, or in Australia, it gets really weird, between $686 Australian and up to $1,100 Australian. So I give this a price bracket of mid to high range compared to other trainer offerings on the market. As for the construction of this trainer out of the box, Think Rider themselves have this all covered over on their YouTube. I found it straightforward and had no issues. A few notes from me though, on the physical side of things, the non-drive side does have issues with clearance of through axle levers. You'll need to have a through axle that screws in with an Allen key. There's no leveling options for the feet. So if your floor isn't quite level, you'll need to get creative yourself. It has lights that just do not quit. Those things are always on. And the X5 Neo has some very noisy internal cooling vans that will kick in at high RPMs when things get very, very hot. These didn't start up very often, but when they did, you could definitely hear them. Now onto the ride experience and the Llama Lab test. Now this trainer was received back in November 2021, which was five months ago, and I've been waiting for a new firmware update to come out, which was promised to have cadence and maybe squeeze a little bit more out of that maximum resistance of 15%. I think it was gonna push it to 20. I haven't seen that firmware. It wasn't available when I did these tests. It's been five months, so I just rolled with what I had. The adopted benchmark for Simmo testing is of course Titan's Grove with its rolling heels. I found the gradients to be responsive using Bluetooth, kicking in and out as I was seeing on the screen. This was quite well handled by the X5 Neo. In erg mode, it held the set point watts very, very well, nice and smooth as you can see here in 200 watts and also at 250. Over and unders were also no problems for the X5 Neo. The power changes were prompt and stabilized very, very quickly. The sprinting resistance was also excellent. I was unable to spin out the flywheel. So the limiter there was, of course, my legs, not the trainer. So the physical ride experience with the X5 Neo was pretty good, to be honest. Those sim gradient changes were nice and fast. It packed a punch up those steeper gradients. Erg mode, nice and smooth held that set point beautifully and also changed set point nice and fast and I couldn't spin it out in a sprint. 
but that's only most of the picture. Let's look at the other half, the power accuracy reported from this trainer. And for that, it's over here to my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer tool, where we can compare multiple data recordings as an overlay and see how they stack up unlike this chair which keeps stacking down. Okay so we have the X5 Neo up against the Powdermax Ngico and the Asioma Duos. Those last two on the bike being a pretty well trusted source of the truth of power accuracy. Standard Llama lab test here, warm up for 10 minutes then a spin down performed on the trainer and also a zero offset performed on both power meters. Jumping into the 200 watt steady state here for 10 minutes we have the ThinkRider reporting set point wattage, so it has erg mode smoothing on there, which will report 200 watts regardless of really what I'm doing, plus or minus a little bit. So the average from the X5 Neo, 199, Powdermax and Gico, 206, and the Asio Majua, 205. So the ThinkRider X5 at 200, reporting just a little bit lower than the other two meters on the bike. Into the 250 watt steady state for 10 minutes, and a similar story there with the numbers. 249.59 from the ThinkRider Neo X5, holding a nice set point there with its fake watts. The power meters on the bike, 256 and 254.3, so very, very close there on the bikes, but the ThinkRider being a little bit lower. I'd take a guess that ThinkRider aren't factoring in any drivetrain losses whatsoever with their power calculations, which we know some other training companies do. On to the sprint, and this particular sprint, well, didn't quite get there with the X5 Neo. The other two meters on the bike, looking pretty good for what is a maximal sprint test, and the X5 Neo not even cracking the 1,000 watts for two data points there, so not quite getting it right for the sprints. Hmm. On to the overs and unders. Uh, as I said, nice and prompt for the over and under changes of... Uh, resistance. We can see that it's very squared off from the ThinkRider Neo in purple. That's because it's reporting the set point, which is always going to be almost perfect. But the other two meters on the bike, they play along and show that the experience was quite good, as I've reported. 259, 263, 262. Again, the ThinkRider Neo being a little bit under, but no big overs and unders, no massive lag in changing from low to high or high to low. That's all looking pretty good. Just the power side of things, just a little bit off, though I am being very, very nitpicky. It's only a few watts there. Now to the flywheel speed test of the Llama Lab test. This is always an interesting little experiment to perform on trainers. Now what this does, I set the trainer to 225 watts in erg mode. So steady state for four and a half minutes, and every 90 seconds I change the flywheel speed. Starting off with a very, very slow flywheel speed, so small ring at the front, big cog on the back, 90 seconds, I change that up. And then the last test, I change it up to 53.11 or 53.12 on the back and really spin things up, and most trainers fail that last 90 seconds. As we can see right here, this doesn't do too bad, but not quite close as we expect. Starting off with the slower flywheel speed there, all's looking pretty good, holding nice steady state, holding nice power. I put it up into a higher flywheel speed. Things start separating just a little bit, still holding quite well. And then where most things fall apart, which is the last 90 seconds where I really spin that flywheel up into 53.11. And as I get on top of the gear here and things start stabilizing, look, it stabilizes quite well, but it does read a little low for the power that I'm actually doing on the bike. So the set point reporting there, 224 or 225 plus or minus again. But what I'm actually doing on the pedals there, 247, 259, you can see there it's around 250 watts plus on the pedals. So not quite passing the Llama lab test for that little section there, but not many trainers do. And then right at the end, as I go back into sim mode from erg mode and the resistance clamps on to the trainer and the flywheel is still going quite high, you can see the power artificially go through the roof. So a bit of a quirk there with the flywheel speed and the power reporting from the X5. The final section of this Llama Lab test was a slow ramp test and a slow hill jam, I'll call it. So just riding along, just riding along, under 100 watts, things look okay. I slowly ramp up, the X5 is a little slower to respond, starts to play ball with the two other meters through here to 400, it then overreads, it then underreads, and then overreads. So, well, it's got all bases covered, I guess, but not that impressive through here, pushing 600 plus through this little ramp test here. So if you were racing on Zwift or any other eSports racing platform, uh, you're gonna be robbed of a few watts under that scenario there. Then it was just riding along, just riding along, where it wasn't too bad at around 200 watts, probably reading just a little low, and then into a hill jam where I'm on the pedals really, really quickly, not an all out sprint, just uh, I guess an acceleration up a small climb. Didn't quite get the peak power, um, of one or two pedal strokes there. Took a little while to come up to meet the other two power meters. Okay through here and then, yeah, 
back to what it was before with that slower drop off in watts. The following day I performed a second Llama lab test, albeit a shorter one this time with some just riding along Coco Cadence uh, bunch right here. And 192, 202, 201, again, being consistently lower than the other two meters. And I think it's because that drivetrain loss isn't being factored in. That is uh, 10 watts or so, not quite within the plus or minus two with that section there. Another short section of 200 and 250 watt steady state performed. 224, 231.5, 230.5. Again, the two power meters on the bike proving that they are pretty close or very close. Uh, and the X5 Neo just reading a little under in that erg. The sprint on day number two was a different story than the day before. This time it waited and then overshot. Now I'm not quite capable of 14.05 indoors. However, today the Think Rider X5 thought I was. So sprints yesterday, it missed the sprints and missed those peaks. Today, got a little bit too excited and overshot them. Hmm. Onto the overs and unders, and same story as the day before. Again, just uh, doing a two-up test for this to make sure everything is right. Again, the graph's looking pretty good. Change is nice and fast. Able to hold within 20 seconds, plus or minus a, a few watts there, given this is unsmooth. So 258, 266, 266. Again, proving the Padmax and Gico and Asio Maduro are friendly with each other, and the Think Rider Neo is a little bit lower. Okay, with the physical ride experience and the data analysis out of the way, let's jump into some pros and cons to summarize my experience with the trainer overall in the Llama Lab. Under the pros, it has a quiet operation. It has a good to excellent ride feel. Prompt gradient changes in sim mode using Titan's Grove on Zwift with its rolling hills. Erg mode set point holds very, very well and it had a good ride feel in Erg. I wasn't feeling fatigued having to push that pedal stroke over. That flywheel was ticking along. It was really, really good. The sprint held the resistance very, very well up to 1200 watts. It wasn't a limiter. My legs were, which is usually the case with those sprint tests. On the cons, power accuracy. Steady state and in sprints just wasn't quite in the ballpark that I'd like to see. There was no in-game calibration on Zwift. You have to use their app for the calibration and they recommend doing that, I believe every 30 hours or so. The X5 Neo, didn't know what to do with that sprint accuracy either. It either missed them or overshot them. So not a unit for the serious sprinter. No cadence data. I think cadence is a must these days on a trainer of this level, even lower level. You should have cadence reported rather than have to use an external cadence sensor. Erg mode does do that data smoothing. So we weren't seeing the real picture of what I was doing. We were seeing what I told it to do rather than what I was actually doing. Some trainers have an option to turn that on or off. As discussed, there was no leveling for the feet on this, so you have to get creative if you have flooring that's a little bit off. And there's also no sleep mode for the lights, so it is always disco. Other trainers do have a sleep mode for their lights, so during inactivity of about 15 minutes, they'll switch everything off, come back on again when you start pedaling. That's an upgrade that this trainer does need. Those lights were very, very bright. Okay, onto the summary and to wrap this one up. Look, overall, it's a great trainer. That's a let down a little bit by that power accuracy. If they could factor in maybe a little bit of drivetrain loss, if that's what I'm seeing, that'll correct that. And those sprints, they really need to be fixed. They were over and under. But look, this is not uncommon for a trainer at this price point. Resistance is easy to do. Power is, as we've seen, in many cases, very, very hard to get right. If you're gonna be purchasing this trainer, I would go local or go through a retailer who has your back with after sales support should anything go wrong. And with that, we'll leave it there because I have another delivery reaching the door right about now. Thanks for watching. As always, it's YouTube. Thumbs are required. Subscriptions help the channel. And there's also a thanks button there too. Someone, someone's at the front door. That's the next trainer for this week. We'll see you soon.